So a couple of years ago, uh, when I was uh, doing a mission down near a place called, you might have heard of Sorrento, it's near Sorrento, it's not, in, not Sorrento exactly, uh, it's called Castellamare, but anyway, I was down there and this uh, couple came to me, a uh, couple in their 70s, and uh, very Italian, very tanned, and with the, 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 the wife was quite vocal, you know, a very confident lady. And uh, so she came to me kind of somewhat dragging her husband by the elbow or the forehead or the ear or something. She was dragging her husband anyway. And, um, and then so she, she kind of drags him over to me and says, now tell him, tell him. If he was Irish, that's how she would have sounded. She, that's not what she said, but go on, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. <laughs> and he looks at her and he goes, eh. Eh. <laughs> and I'm standing there like thinking, um, can I help you? Is there anything I can do for you? You all right? How are you getting on? Father Patrick, please meet you. Father Patrick, please meet you. Um, are you okay? And she said, Padre, Padre, he no go to confession. He no go. I said, do, do you want to go to confession? And the guy was like, yeah. <sighs> okay, I said, okay. Um, tell you what, can I just talk to you for a sec? You know, I think it's usually a better approach, right? Because I've been dragged along by your mom or your wife is never effective mission or ministry. So tell you what, love, you go pray in our rosary over there, I'll be back to you. So I spoke to the husband and I said, um, so how are you getting on, where are you from? And he described it and he described the beauty of the local cheese in his area. They're very fond of food. Um, so, uh, and I said, great. I said, well, do you, do you want to go to confession or, or what? And he said, Padre, um, no. I said, right, okay. Um, is it that you don't sin or, or what's the story? Uh, I said, no, no, I, I, you don't understand. I said, okay, well, what don't I understand? <laughs> Explain to me, enlighten me. I'm only Irish. Um, and he said, hey, Padre, you see, uh, when I was young, I went to confession to Padre Pio. Eh. Went to confession. I said, what year was that? Because as far as I remember, he died in 1968. Eh, yeah, eh, 65. So he went to confession last in, 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 in 19... 65, 1965. Eh, si. Padre Pio, pero, ah, Padre Pio. I said, oh, I get the point. I mean, he's, he's, he's a, he, was, he was great, absolutely. But the point here isn't who you go to confession to. The point is how often you go to confession because in every confession, we don't meet the saint or the somewhat pale-looking Irish priest or whoever it is. You meet Jesus. The, the point is in confession, we meet the Lord. I said, I said do, you, do, you, do you understand? Do you get that? He said, si, 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 pero, Padre Pio. I said, I know, I, I know, I get it, I get it. But that won't help you when you're standing before the Lord. Jesus won't ask you, who did you go to confession? And then you actually have to, you have to, you have to get a small bit angry with them because that's kind of how they work. So you kind of have to, which is kind of fun. <laughs> so, so I have to say, that won't help you. <laughs> Are you crazy? You stand before Jesus, you say, I went to Padre Pio. That makes no difference at all. He doesn't care. Right? You have to get your soul clean. Doesn't matter if you went to like a, an amazing hotel back in the day and got a full body shower back in 1965. That's no good to you today. You need to go to confession now, my friend. Okay, bye. bye. And he went to confession. So it's, 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 it's just, it, was, it was very, very interesting to see though how we can misunderstand God's mercy, right? Misunderstand God's mercy. This is really, really important that we get this right because if we don't, we are offered graces that we don't avail of. We are offered graces that we don't take. So Jesus has this, this very awkward kind of uh, balance. When I was young, I wasn't great at the old hurling, but we had a, a neighbor who was big into the hurling. So he used to invite us along to, to come to training down, in, down the road in a, in, in, a, in a hurling pitch. And we used to go occasionally and whatever, and we did go, we didn't go. And lo and behold, I, we ended up winning a medal. I think we were the only team in that age group. So we got a medal for qualifying. I have that medal at home somewhere, and it means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. I put in no, I put in no training. I put in no effort at all into it. I got this free medal, you know, it means nothing to me. So if we get something too easily, it means nothing to us, right? If we get something too easily, like if, you're, if someone says to you, this is my most precious gift, 
here you go. And you're like, um, thanks. You know, it was like it's a cup and saucer from the 15th century given to me by my great, 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 great grandmother. That's grand, yeah. Thanks. Like, it mean, means nothing to me. Whereas a medal that you've had to get up at six o'clock in the morning to go to training for two hours before work for a year and then you failed, right? You came fourth or something in the division. And so you go on the second year and you're up at five o'clock this time and you're doing weight training and hot and cold training and, and treatment and, and weights and, 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 and running and cardio and, 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 every, and skills and the whole lot. And then you win that medal, my goodness, you will put it up on the wall and look at it every day and go, Mwah. <clears throat> you know, it means something to you. So God has this, and because he knows our minds, he has this balance to maintain. If he gives his grace too easily, too easily, we'll take it for granted. Yeah, go to Mass, don't go to Mass, get Holy Communion, don't get Holy Communion, whatever. I don't care. If it's too easy, we disrespect it. But then if you make it too hard, it makes it look like, you know, God wants us to jump through hoops. You know, why, God, why are you making it so complicated to get your grace? So he has this kind of balance to maintain where he wants us to, to avail of all the grace he has available, but he doesn't want us to have to jump through a load of hoops either and make it look like he's, he's keeping his grace from us. He's not. He wants us to have it, but what he asks us to do is an absolute minimum in comparison to what we get. You know, right? He gives us so, so much. The, the return on our investment, if you will, is incredible. Today is the Feast of Divine Mercy. And Jesus tells us in the diary of St. Faustina, this uh, amazing Polish saint from la the last century. And that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall, co shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment, otherwise known as a plenary indulgence. On that day, all of the divine floodgates through which grace flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. There are a load of quotations we could read from the Diary of St. Faustina, but I think there's a fundamental disposition that we must have, otherwise, no, no matter what I read, it makes no difference. Do you want this? Do you want that grace? If you don't, there's no real point to me continuing. Do you want a soul wiped clean of all stain of sin? Do you want to start from scratch? What the Lord asks of us, as I say, is so, so small. Firstly, just our disposition, that simply that, that, that I want it, that I want this grace, that I open my heart to it. The other conditions, obviously, are a little more difficult this year as last year, uh, going to confession and receiving Holy Communion. But again, God is, is, he binds himself to his sacraments. He's not bound by his sacraments. He binds himself uh, to these certain graces or, or indulgences, but he's not bound by them. So he wants your healing. He wants to give his mercy to you more than you could ever want it. So the Lord won't allow himself to be, to be bound by, by the circumstances that we find ourselves in if it's no fault of our own. If you want these graces, we can receive spiritual communion, we can go to confession. If possible, you, maybe you know a priest and you can go if you really wish. Uh, if not, we make uh, a, an act of contrition out of love. So it's an, called an act of perfect contrition, which actually does absolve mortal sins until we can go to confession the next time. So these graces are available to us. Do you want them? Do you want them? If you do, the Lord died on the cross to give them to you. If you don't want them, that's up to you. That's up to you. But this world is, it isn't a very easy place. It's not, maybe even not a very safe place. It's quite complicated. And there are a lot of influences that want to hurt your soul. I think we need God. I think we need divine help. I think we need these graces. 
And I think if the Lord is providing them at this time, he knows that it's because at this time we need them. So if we open our hearts and souls to the grace of this incredible feast day, we can start again. We can start afresh. And we can let this Easter joy and these Easter graces flow into our hearts, flow into our pure souls, that we can recognize who the Lord is. Love and compassion. Amen.